Okay, so here's how I believe it went down. When Geiger left work on the evening of September 6th, she sent a text message to Rivera to let him know that she was about to leave work. That message was coded and really meant to signal the start of the operation. Having received that text message, Rivera would have noted the time, then called Geiger's phone when he thought she was almost at Southside Flats. Geiger got into the Southside Flats gate at 2143, then disappeared until 2150. Neither she nor Ranger Armstrong could account for the time she went missing. So I'm going to come back to States Exhibit Number 48, but I want to show you what's already in evidence as States Exhibit Number 260. If this particular vehicle belonged to a gentleman named Ronald Jones, saw Amber Geiger pull in and park, she came in behind, and this was seven minutes after she entered the parking garage, he enters the parking garage. Would that also again be indicative that at some point she pulled off after entering the parking garage and before she parked on the third floor? I believe so. You indicated that, in fact, you didn't pull over once you entered your parking garage, that you drove up and parked in that space where we see your pickup truck on the fourth floor. I did not pull over. Let me just ask the question again because I just want to make sure I understand it. Are you telling this jury that when you entered the parking garage, you drove all the way from the gate up to the fourth floor, backed in just as we see your pickup truck? I did. But seven minutes and 46 seconds was more than enough time for Geiger to drive up to her usual parking spot on the third floor leave her phone in the truck with Rivera on the line, then take the stairs to the fourth floor to confirm that Botham Sky is in the garage, the parking spot like hers on the fourth floor is vacant, and that the deadbolt on Botham's apartment door is not protruding into the wall. Botham is a six-foot-one bachelor from the Caribbean. Caribbean people don't usually lock their doors unless they are going to bed or going out. Having confirmed that conditions are ideal for the assault, Geiger returns to her truck and waits on the lookout for any random vehicle going up to the fourth floor. She needs a witness to testify having seen her come up to the fourth floor, and that witness never came until 2150 when Mr. Jones drove in. Geiger ends the call with Rivera then drives up to the fourth floor in a manner that would cause Mr. Jones not only to see her, but remember her as well. Truck? Yes. And what was it about the truck that made you pay attention to that? Because it was going, it was coming, it was going fast around the corner and driving a big truck. I, I used to slow down, but they were driving fast, so it kind of caught my eye. And that he saw you coming around the corner, driving in such a way that made him take notice of your white truck. I heard him say that. So you believe that to be a lie? I don't, can't, I don't think I drove that fast that night. Okay, but you understand that uh, if he saw you do that, unless he's lying to the jury for some reason, then you couldn't have already been there like you testified to. I couldn't answer that, sir. I mean, back then. I did back up into my truck and stay on the phone. Uh, did you see the person who got out of that white pickup truck? Yes. And stay on the phone. Uh, did you see the person who got out of that white pickup truck? Yes. Uh, was it a male or a female? A uh, female. Okay, and, was there, and that was the person, was that person uh, dressed like a police officer? Yes. Uh, Geiger backs her truck in, exits the vehicle, and walks over to Botham John's door. She then does a quick entry into Botham's apartment, one like this. Once into the door, Geiger drops her gear to the floor to operate her weapon with both hands. Botham jumps off the sofa as she fires one at his head, but misses. She fires again as Botham comes forward trying to get behind the kitchen counter. This wrong hits him in the chest and lodges somewhere in his lower back. Geiger confirms the hit, then sends two coded text messages to Rivera to report as follows. Hurry, I need you now, means job completed. Had he ever been over to the South Side Flats? No, he has not ever been there. Okay. Did you even know if he knew you lived in the South Side Flats? I had no idea if he even knew I lived there. I f***ed up, means I f***ed him up, he's dead.
In summary, no amount of red mats in front of the door or other obvious signs would have prevented Geiger from going to Botham's apartment because the plan was to kill him and use the Texas Castle Doctrine to get away with murder. Geiger did not plan this on her own. The mastermind behind this horrible crime is still out there. Do you recall uh, ever hearing someone say, hey, put your hands up at a loud tone? No, no ma'am. And should be facing the court on a charge of accessory to murder. Thanks for watching. Stay safe.